Coming up on today's Airborne, the NTSB issues an accident report summary for Asiana Flight 214. A 350 XWB test fleet is now complete, and the Queen leases a helicopter for William and Kate. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. This report summary is only a synopsis of the NTSB findings on the crash of Asiana Flight 214 while executing a visual approach to San Francisco International Airport on June 16, 2013. The summary contains almost 5,000 words and is testimony to the scope of the investigation. Of course, the report focused on why the crew simply undershot the runway during a visual approach while flying the airplane manually. Numerous areas of Asiana's crew training, operational procedures, flight publications, and other aspects of flight crew coordinations were examined and brought into question. However, the design of the avionics and auto flight system and other areas of the Boeing 777-200ER were also investigated. Because this was a survivable accident, the NTSB also delved into the emergency procedures and emergency responses provided by airport personnel. The report clearly shows that multiple causes for the accident were in play and provides an important insight as to how a combination of actions and inactions led to this tragic accident. This summary should be required reading for anyone that actively participates in aviation safety issues. Flight testing and certifying a new airliner is a tough job, and it takes more than one of the new models to finish the job in a reasonable amount of time. For certification of the new Airbus A350 XWB, the fifth test airplane has now joined in the certification process. Being the second passenger cabin-equipped A350 and tasked with route proving and ETOPS validation, this new member of the team embodies the operationally definitive configuration for type certification duties. This milestone means that the A350 XWB development program is at full speed and on track for certification in the third quarter of this year. As of the end of last week, the A350 XWB program had already achieved more than 2,000 flight test hours in around 500 flights, which average around 80 flight hours per aircraft per month. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADSB will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADSB today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADSB out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The next time your mother asks you what you want for a gift-giving occasion, you might remind her that the Queen of England got Prince William a helicopter for his birthday. And not just any helicopter. The aircraft, which has already been dubbed Air Force One, that's AIR spelled H-E-I-R by the media, is a six-year-old Augusta 109S Grand. The royal family is reportedly the first owner of the Hilo. It's reported that the aircraft will be leased by the Queen, and it will also be available to other family members for VIP transportation. And it's not known if William, a qualified helicopter pilot, will actually be doing the flying himself or riding in the back. The royal family says that the aircraft will whisk William and Kate to and from their official duties, allowing them to spend quality time at home with their son, Prince George. It must be nice to be the prince. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, 
Sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. The Green Flight Challenge is really exploring a new frontier in propulsion. That is, we've had reciprocating and turbine engines for 100 or for 70 years. What we're doing is exploring the ability of electric propulsion to dramatically improve efficiency, decrease noise, reduce operating costs, and generally make aircraft much more reliable and safe. Electric flight was only an experimental concept just a few years ago, but programs like the Green Flight Challenge help to make it mature into an operational reality. Search the Green Flight Challenge on Aero TV's news channel. A pilot from South Carolina claims to have set a world record for altitude attained in an electric-powered aircraft following a flight on Saturday. Tom Patton has that story. Gary Davis took off from Greenville Downtown Airport Saturday in his electric-powered ultralight trike and climbed to an altitude of 3,700 feet. He said it was the first attempt of its kind in an electric aircraft. According to WNCN-TV, Davis, who's been a pilot for 39 years, has been flying gas-powered ultralights for 34 of those years. He said he switched over to electric about two years ago, and he can now make the same flight using 30 cents worth of energy that would have cost him about $6 in gas. Davis has submitted his flight to the Federation Aeronautique Internationale, which must certify the record before it becomes official. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. Okay, aviation sport fans, when it comes to flying for fun, it's hard to beat the Breezy. A while back, we reported that the Breezy's 50th anniversary will be celebrated at EAA Air Venture this year. Now we have some more details regarding the activities. The Air Venture activities kick off with the Breezy arrival at Whitman Regional Airport on Saturday, July 27th. Pilots arriving in any home built will receive the 2014 I Flew My Home Built patch depicting the Breezy when they register at Home Builders headquarters. Events are scheduled Tuesday, July 29th through Thursday, July 31st. The action then picks up again on Saturday, August 2nd. The event on Tuesday will start off the recognition of the Breezy with a special ceremony being held at the Brown Arch honoring Carl Unger, the man responsible for this ultimate sport plane. The other days will include static and flight demonstrations. You can get full details of the schedule on the EAA website at www.eaa.org. This is a test for all business-minded viewers. True or false? Your customers will be happier if you raise prices and reduce service. If you answered true, the wrong answer, you probably work for the TSA. Congress agreed to raise the TSA fees during budget negotiations in December, where the fee was $2.50 for a nonstop flight and $5 for a trip with a layover. The new fees are a flat rate of $5.60 per boarding. So if you change plans, you pay each time you walk down the jetway. But wait, it gets even better. If you have a flight with a layover of more than four hours, the agency says that that should cost you an additional $5.60. It's reported that the TSA is presenting new definitions of what constitutes a round-trip flight and what constitutes a layover. The agency says it has submitted an interim final rule in the Federal Register to restructure the security fees. 
Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.